Welcome to another edition of Flex Rental Solutions How To Videos. Today we're going to be going over the process of getting your inventory ready to import into Flex Rental Solutions. The goal is to get up and running as quickly as possible. We've noticed that our customers who get their inventory imported have a much more uh, higher uh, implementation rate. And so that is why we've offered the free inventory import to help our customers get up and running quickly. The way we structure our inventory is through what we call folders or groups. On our demo system, you can see that we've got folders here, video, we've created a folder called projection, large venue DLPs, and then put in the inventory underneath there. Flex Rental Solutions can support up to six folders deep of uh, during the import process. We recommend that the majority of our customers use three folders deep to import their inventory. We find that if you go more than three folders deep, that the account managers and people using uh, Flex folder structure on a daily basis spend too much time opening and closing folders to get to what they want. So as a rule of thumb, try to keep your folders less than three folders deep when doing your import process. We also find that if a folder has more than 20 or 30 line items, that once you open up the folder that you spend too much time scrolling up and down to find that item. So if a folder has more than 20 or 30 line items, we recommend that you may want to add subfolders to that and break that long list of items up. So let's look at our blank inventory Im import sheet and then let's move that over to uh, and look at the export to this process to see what this folder structure and inventory looks like in an export process. So on the inventory import sheet that you'll be working on, you have a models tab on the bottom left and a unit tab on the bottom left. You'll notice that there's some uh, columns that are the same in both the model and the units. On the model, there is an item name, and on the units, there is an item name. The way that translates is if you have serialized items, that the name of the item needs to be the exact same in both the model and the unit during the upport, during the import process. That is what will join the units to the model. So on the model page, we've got quantity own, item name, size, short name, etc. And let's go over each of these items here. Quantity owned is if a model is non-serialized, say you have 25 foot XLR cables, we can put in a quantity that says we own 10 of these. We can put in the name, the size field is a secondary size uh, descriptor. So we have certain companies who will put in the same name and then put a size of 10 foot and put in a size called 25 foot. And let's say we own 13 of these items. This would put in an item name called 3-pin XLR-10 foot when you look at it in the folder structure. We could also not even use the size field it is just an option and put it just in the whole descriptive line right there. It is all up to you and up to your own preferences. I would say more than half of our customers probably just use it all in the descriptive name field um, and that's just because of uh, earlier preferences. The short name is a name that will replace a long descriptive name on the left-hand side of the screen. So here, 
if you've got a really long descriptive name for an item that you use for the quotes, but you don't want to show that whole long name, you can use that field called short name to replace it. So as an example, if you had Yamaha PM5D Digital Audio Console 56, that might be a very long name over on the left hand side of the screen. So we would then go back to the name field and maybe put in a short name just called Yamaha PM5D and everyone would know exactly what item we are referring to. The shorthand is a holdover from uh, other older inventory software platforms that might have a code that you need to know to find these items. So if the code for this was YPM5D, when you went and searched for that item, you could find it using this very particular code. The inventory group, and then secondary group, and third level group are what creates the structure. So as an example, if I go to this existing export that we have created, we have an inventory item here called one ton hoist 16. And the group it belongs to is just truss and rigging. So it's one folder deep. And if we go back to here, if we go to our inventory, truss and rigging, There's this one ton hoist 16, and it has a short name called one ton hoist. So that is where we found that folder. If we scroll down farther, we can see that we have items that belong to audio and snakes. We have 18 foot tall blue drape that belongs to a folder called soft goods, a subcategory called drape, a subcategory of pipe and drape, and a subcategory called components. So if you need to use a structure that is more than four, more than three layers deep, you can simply add a column here and call it group four, group five, or group six and keep adding those folders if needed. The model barcode is for the model only. So in our system, we have assigned a barcode to, to not only each model, but each unit, because sometimes we need to scan stuff that relates to the model. Sometimes we need to scan stuff that relates to the serial number. So you'll notice this model 8270 and there are no it is this item is tracked by serial number but there are no units at this time if we were to add a unit it would generate a brand new barcode you would want to make sure that these are non that these model barcodes are unique to themselves and are not reused in the units area If you leave this field blank during the import process, we will create a brand new unique barcode for you during the import process. So for the majority of people, if they don't have model barcodes uh, existing, just leave it blank and we will generate those for you. Manufacturing name is for use when we create manifests. Part numbers are store and information, manufacturer country, you could put China or USA or United Kingdom. Is tracked by serial number means is this particular model has serialized units. During the import process, 
if you leave this area blank, it will assume that they're all known. If you import units for a model, it will automatically change a model setting from no to yes because it will be importing units for it. So as an example, I'm going to go to our units page here. These are all the different units that belong to the models that we've created. So as you can see, if when we imported these these eight 24 channel 208 volt distros, if the model that it belonged to was set to non-serialized or tracked by serial number is no, it would automatically change that setting during the unit import to yes and then import those specific units. These items is virtual, is container, is free pick container, is expendable are all attributes that you can set. If this model that you're importing is going to be the parent virtual package item, is virtual can be set to yes. Is container is does this item have other accessories that go with it? Is free pick container is during the scan out process if you would like to add more items to this specific model during the scan process is free pick container would be set to yes is expendable is on items that you drag and drop into a quote if they are more of a retail nature and are not expected to return that is what we call an expendable item the weight unit could be something like pounds and then the actual amount of pounds linear unit might be inches and then the height length and weight as a rule of thumb try to keep all your weights the exact same unit of measure and all your linear units the same measure during the import process track by running hours allows you to track individual items hours as they go in and out some people use these for video projectors or for uh, lighting uh, fixtures. Item purchase cost is the generic purchase cost for this item. We also have an item replacement cost. These two may be the same. They may be different. I would say as a rule of thumb most of our customers use the manufacturer's suggested retail price as the replacement cost and use the purchase cost of their particular uh, purchase rate so the majority of our customers have a higher replacement cost than a purchase cost we can import up to five different pricing models so some people will create a price model called day rate some customers use a cost field which is the internal cost of an item so if you have a Yamaha PM5D that internally you charge the company $100 and then anything above and beyond that would be considered profit on that Yamaha PM5D you would say the cost field is 100 and the rental price might be 450 a day and this cost one these relate to one price model and on the very and then we would uh, take that and import that in as say your day rate you may want to make some notes here as to day cost and then we will make those changes and make sure that this relates to your day cost. When we go to your units tab, again the item name needs to be the exact name as the model name. The size is, again if you use that size description, uh, it needs to be the same serial number of the individual item stencil some people use very specific uh, visual stencils to identify things and then the unit barcode this would be the asset item barcode model number is for certain people might have a generic model name 
say you may have a model name called single rack CD player and during the course of ownership of the company you may have bought four different models of single disc or single rack space CD players but they may be different models instead of having four different models that all have a availability of one that gets a little bit annoying trying to check availability of single rack CD players so you could create a model name called single rack CD player and then for each of the unit put the model name there and it makes checking availability much easier for business location at this we're going to be my Utah warehouse I could type in Utah serial number purchase date is what is the date that we purchased this item the currency that we purchased it with and the purchase cost other things that are of well let's take a look now at some examples of the export process so on this very specific 24 channel 208 distro we did not put any of the information for the serial number or stencil the only information that we provided was just the barcode and the location other items during the import process had stencils purchase date purchase cost again all this is all subject to you but here is an example of all the different units that we have created for different items and what you'll notice is each one of these relates to a very specific model. So if I hit find, we will find that exact same model name here. This item belongs to lighting and LEDs, etc. So As far as the import process, I highly recommend anyone who has information that they use the import process. Again, we find that companies who get their inventory get up and running quicker. If you have any specific usage questions, you can send those questions to support at flexrentalsolutions.com. We'll be upload uploading both this uh, sample model import and unit import up to the download section so you can review this for your own internal purposes and if you have any questions again please contact support at flexrentalsolutions.com thanks